Hi everyone, it is April 9, 2019, a second, a second bomb cyclone. Colorado predicted to go from 80 degrees to a blizzard. Wow. Well, that is quite a drop, isn't it? 80 degrees. Actually, the, uh, what was it, AccuWeather, that site said, Colorado, you're going to see a 60 degree drop in temperature starting tomorrow, and then you're going to get a blizzard. Okay, first I want you to listen to this news clip about Nebraska. A rare weather event today, power plants are making it snow in Nebraska. New at 10, Channel 8 Eyewitness News reporter Katrina Spurl explains it all for us. Katrina? That's right. I spoke with the National Weather Service who said today's weather conditions were just right for the power plants to generate snow. Quite the phenomenon in Nebraska on Monday, many places were being dusted with snow, but it wasn't from Mother Nature. It was actually man-made. The National Weather Service location in the Omaha and Valley area reported that the snow was actually created by the steam from power plants in Norfolk. When you're driving around on a typical day, uh, you may pass a, a plant of some sort and you see the steam that it's producing. Typically that just evaporates. Uh, but on a day like today, where we had just the right temperatures, just the right humidity in place, it was able to actually produce snow. It's not common, but it has happened before in the United States. Brian explained how it's possible for power plants to help generate snow. We have heat and steam, which is moisture, just added to the atmosphere. And when that goes up in the atmosphere on a day like today, you end up getting additional clouds and snow crystals to form. Now, after those form, the wind continues to blow and pushes them downstream. The National Weather Service radar showed this band of snow. The wind carried the snow to as far south as Lincoln and Crete. Some areas got up to two inches of snow just from the power plants. It was a day where uh, it was set up for light snow to fall, but if you were downwind of, of this particular narrow snow band, you got a little bit more than everyone else. Brian predicted that the winds decreasing tonight and temperatures cooling off will put an end to the snow, but still a very interesting and unique concept to learn about today. Yes. Oh, yeah. Very interesting. Very, very interesting, isn't it? Now, do you think that was an accident? Could they make snow deliberately? Of course they can, especially when they can actually control the temperature of the atmosphere. But look at this, carbon black cloud seeding makes weather to order. Wow, a Navy chemist has proved that carbon black dust can make or break a cloud. That comes from Florence W. Van Stratton. She was working for the Navy Weather Service. This is back in 1958. Wow, 1958. Already, already they were doing experiments. All, uh, uh, she demonstrated that carbon black absorbing heat from the sun can change atmospheric conditions enough to create clouds or to break them up quickly. Carbon black would be the ideal material to induce the temperature variations because of its ability to absorb heat. Wow. So, another bomb cyclone? I thought they were rare. I guess they're not rare anymore. They're not rare anymore. But in addition to snow, residents could see dangerous flooding, including in towns in Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, and along the Missouri River, where people are still coping with the effects of last month's floods. The storm came ashore from the Pacific Ocean on Sunday and Monday, bringing heavy rain and floods to Oregon, where evacuation orders were issued in the Eugene area. Oregon Public Broadcasting reported on Monday it is also expected to cause problems in Idaho and Montana as it gets closer to its expected meeting with cold air. Precipitation is expected to begin as rain, but change to snow during the day as colder air moves into the area and parts of South Dakota could see more than 24 inches of heavy, wet snow. 
and I just posted the video on the Ogala Dakota Nation oh, or Sioux Nation. Jesus, I'm so sorry. I can't remember. My brain is leaving me on how much they need help from the flooding. So now they're looking at this. Another bomb cyclone could strike Nebraska this week. Just what you need, right? Just what you need. Another extraordinary storm is expected to slam Nebraska this week, piling on misery and possibly more flooding. It looks like it's going to be a doozy. You know, I don't see where it is. Where is this uh, storm that came in from the Pacific and this storm making its way across states eventually to hit colder weather that will bring about a bomb cyclone? Where is the bomb cyclone? Where, where is the cyclone? What's going on? Can't see it. Can't see it. I do see an awful lot of radar, Doppler radar, working. It's pulsating intensely in Texas. Boom, big pulse. Wow. Well, you got lasers, you've got pulsating Doppler radar shooting off. All dangerous uh, for all life in that area. But we do know that they can create temperature changes very quickly and they can create snow and they can create rain and they have been doing it for a very long time. Uh, this is what we see on College of DuPage. So we don't see this on radar though. Where is it on radar? It's nowhere to be found. Okay, now it was in Truth by Grace who said they can um, they can't uh, change the radar but they can alter satellite. They can't alter what you're seeing here on radar but they can alter satellite. This is a satellite. So what you are seeing right here, it may not be occurring. This is like a Disney production. And you do know that Rothschild, the Rothschilds own our weather um, satellites and I believe it's Raytheon that controls our weather satellites, a, a defense contractor. So, I mean they have to have it somewhere, right? If they're claiming a bomb cyclone is going to be hitting this area tomorrow, well you got to have some pictures on satellite. Well, there you go. And you also have what appears to be the superheating from Doppler radar. So let's go to the next run on College of DuPage and see if, it, if this exists. No, it doesn't. No, it does not. So, where is this bomb cyclone that is going to be hitting many states uh, in less than 24 hours? Well, they've got to create it. Now, there are unfortunately more people than not that 
actually know that man is controlling the weather, so they won't even bother going to any of these sites to see, hey, where is it on radar? Uh, but it's on satellite, that doesn't make any sense. They'll just watch mainstream media weather reporting, and they'll believe all of the horse shit that they will hear. Oh, I am so sorry for cursing. So, they may very well bring about the conditions <clears throat> that will make everybody believe that oh, another bomb cyclone, another bomb cyclone hit. It's on Nebraska, Colorado, and Montana, Idaho, Iowa, South Dakota. Yeah. I hope to God that nothing really bad happens, but when man is controlling the weather, you never know. I'm going to link below to this video, laser frequency beams, seen on radar and scalar weather modification explained. This is Tom Bearden, a retired, um, oh God, I should have put it in the description. Um, retired army, his, his expertise was scalar weapons. And here he is talking about uh, the weather engineering over North America starting back in the mid-60s. And then I receive comments from people who say, oh, it's always the Russians, blaming it on the Russians. Understand this, please. The Soviets were more advanced than the United States was in terms of weather modification decades ago. They were more advanced. Do you think that they weren't doing any kind of weather modification over the United States decades ago? Of course they were. So, um, Tom Bearden explains scalar radar, Doppler radar, weather engineering. Before I go on, I want you to listen, please, to just a few minutes of this. The government has the clear responsibility to weigh the importance of large-scale experiments. And I didn't have it on at the right time, and I apologize for that. Scientists have studied the atmosphere for many decades, but its problems continue to defy us. The reasons for our limited progress are obvious. Weather cannot be easily reproduced and observed in the laboratory. It must therefore be studied in all of its violence, wherever it has its way. Here is an oceanography. New scientific tools have become available with modern computers, rockets, and satellites. The time is ripe to harness a variety of disciplines for a concerted attack. And even more than oceanography, the atmospheric sciences require worldwide observation and hence international cooperation. Some of our most successful international efforts have involved the study of the atmosphere. We all know that the World Meteorological Organization has been effective in this field. It is now developing a worldwide weather system to which nations the world over can make their contribution. Such cooperative undertakings can challenge the world's best efforts for decades to come. And fourth, I would mention a problem which I know has greatly concerned many of you. That is our responsibility to control the effects of our own scientific experiments. For as science investigates the natural environment, it also modifies it. And that modification may have incalculable consequences for evil as well as for good. In the past, the problem of conservation has been mainly the problem of human waste, of natural resources, of their destruction. But science has the power for the first time in history now to undertake experiments with premeditation, which can irreversibly alter our biological and physical environment on a global scale. The problem is difficult because it is hard to know in advance whether the cumulative effects of a particular experiment 
will help or harm mankind. In the case of nuclear testing, a few weeks later, John F. Kennedy was assassinated. He was concerned about the technology that man had already developed to control the weather. He was very concerned that it would be used for evil. So why don't we just listen to about a minute more. This is our former President Johnson. It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather and he who controls the weather will control the world and ultimately to control the weather and he who controls the weather will control the world okay well then they went on to use the weather modification in vietnam to cause flooding so, heavy rain this week could prolong Mississippi River flooding in eastern Iowa. Flooding forces evacuations for a second day in Oregon. 500 people remain evacuated from their homes in Oregon after record-breaking rain that shut down roads and forced officials to close schools in the hardest-hit communities. Well, a video that I posted, I don't know, maybe two days ago, I saw this article where U-Haul <clears throat> was allowing 30 days for all of their customers in uh, Louisiana. Due to the flooding, 30 days free storage due to flooding. And I asked in that video, you guys in Louisiana, what happened? New Orleans, Baton Rouge, did anything happen? Because that article was stating that something like seven counties, or it might have even been 17 counties, I can't remember, had been flooded. What? Well, I'll ask again. Anything? You know anything in Louisiana about the flooding? What's happening in Oregon? U.S. Army Corps of Engineers releasing more water than usual from the Willamette River, is that how you pronounce it? Uh, from their reservoirs. There go the Army Corps of Engineers releasing waters from reservoirs. Well, you guys in Houston know full well, Houston and the surrounding areas, you know full well what the Army Corps of Engineers did. Flooded out tens of thousands of homes by releasing waters from the reservoirs. So, yeah, here we go. So, Lane County residents told to evacuate amid historic release of water from reservoirs. You guys in Oregon, let us know what is happening in your area. So, authorities have asked residents of two Lane County floodplains to evacuate immediately as the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers released the water from a reservoir amid heavy rains. Immediate threat is most acute for people in the Roe River floodplain and with a delayed impact to those on the coast fork of the Willamette floodplain. Both areas have been issued a level three evacuation notice which means that danger to the area is imminent. If you choose to ignore this advisement you must understand that emergency services may not be avail available to assist you further. Do not delay leaving to gather any belongings or make efforts to protect your home. Okay, well, this was, uh, this was posted April 8th. It was actually posted April 7th. Updated April 8th. It is now April 9th. Oregon, please tell us what's happening. 
A dump truck swept off the road. Wow, dump trucks are really heavy. Really heavy. But it was swept off the road by flood waters. Triggered. It, it, it triggered a rescue. A flood uh, took a dump truck. The force of that water, then, must have been intense. Right? Well... Let me just see. Look at what sound can do to water. Just sound. So what this person used was a speaker, a rubber hose, water source, tone generating software, producing a 24 hertz sin wave and 24 FPS capable camera. Well, to film this, all right? So, this was just done at home. Turning on the water, and here we go. Wow. Okay. Sound. Sound has clearly a very dramatic effect on water, doesn't it? Yeah. I will link below to everything, but then think about the force of these floods, the force of the water. Gwen Towers emit extremely low frequencies, sonic, like infra uh, sound waves through the ground. Don't you think that they could produce a current in this water that is really intense? I sure do. Landslide alert for Oregon. <laughs> it doesn't, it, it, this is incredible. Heavy rain can trigger landslides and debris flows in steep terrain and that the risk is higher in burn areas. Well, I guess I'll end with this. This that I have played so often in videos. This is the director of the Texas Weather Modification Association, and he is talking. He's giving an interview, mainstream media, giving an interview about how successful these uh, seeding Seeding of clouds has been for producing rain. This summer? This summer. You, you succeeded in increasing rainfall? Uh, south of San Antonio, we had aircraft flying on a dozen days in the month of July, treating what we deemed to be seedable storms. And what was the result of that? Uh, the same result that we've seen since it started in 1997. Some clouds respond very well. Some clouds respond only to a limited degree. Maybe one or two instances when uh, one or two instances when clouds didn't respond as we had hoped, probably because we got to them too late. And when you say they responded very well, what does that mean? It means that the storm lived longer and produced more rain over a larger area. And how do we know that it did that? I mean, what if you hadn't seeded? I mean, good question. You know. uh, we know that because we systematically analyze on a given day clouds that are seeded, and we compare their behavior with cloud similar clouds in areas adjacent to the target area that were not seeded and we compare the behavior uh, the target area so they target an area for rain but the most important thing that this man said that you need to listen to very carefully and i hope i got it on the right spot uh, the same result that we've seen since it started in 1997 some clouds respond very well some clouds respond only to a limited degree. 
maybe one or two instances when uh, one or two instances when clouds didn't respond as we had hoped, probably because we got to them too late. And when you say they responded very well, what does that mean? It means that the storm lived longer and produced more rain over a larger area. Did you hear that? They can produce storms that produce more rain over larger areas for longer periods of time. And that would cause a whole lot of flooding. Yeah. I think I said, along with a lot of other people, we will be seeing a lot of destruction this year. I hope everything that they're saying about this so-called bomb cyclone, which is nowhere in sight, nowhere in sight, but we sure do have Doppler radar working it. Okay. I hope they fail. What can I say? Because Nebraska, Iowa, South Dakota, they don't need, they don't need more. But look, snow, 24 inches, that's what they are predicting for South Dakota. They're going to flood out. They've already stated that the flooding this year from the snow melt will be intense. We have to figure out a way to help one another. All links are below.